have no budget for even three hiring. people. It's true. <laughs> I, I'm waiting for my first check. <laughs> playing it, in the mail, playing so. it fast and loose with the word hiring. Uh, yeah, with that, with episode... that money that you're going to send me, I'll buy that uh, we, uh, that webcam you're talking oh, about. It's, so. it's, it's in the mail. Uh, <laughs> okay, episode, I'll be waiting. Episode 68 of Current Gen <laughs> Podcast. I'm Almost Tim giggity. here Almost with giggity. Dan and Derek, and we now have officially added Jeff and Kyle to the show. Welcome, gentlemen. Hello. Thank so, you. Wel- welcome. Cheering. Welcome. Uh, I was and pulling for applause, but no one was. Welcome, cheering, so. and we're sorry. And we're so, so yeah, sorry. you know what? I'm sorry too because now you have to hear this voice. Yeah, yeah. more commonly. So, you know, Ugh. I'm one of those really cool CEOs who lets everyone have the same salary that I have. Like I'm very, <laughs> very progressive that way. Wow. When it so, comes to how woke of you? Sharing the wealth. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. You sound like a Bernie, yeah. bro. Then this should make you happy. Like, Why the fuck are you not coming through, you dumb yeah, bitch? I don't know. You, your whole body's not coming through right now. <laughs> Jesus. This is apparently not, no longer rated PG. What, what or, can, I get, make can I get his webcam? Because it looks like it's, it works great. It's better when you guys at least save the swears till the end of the show. No one's listening. Yeah. It, you know, like, don't kick it off with it. Yeah. By the way, uh, this, the this evening's show is brought to you by Fat Tire. Wow. Any, nice. Anybody else drinking tonight? What do you that got? Looks like a beer bottle. Uh, I had uh, two seltzers before I got on. So okay. All right. So Aren't water. Fancy? Water bottle. What brand? <laughs> I just Contigo? I just smoked a bunch it's of a... tap. No, Are we allowed rat. to say that? Me not. No, you, you, you definitely didn't. I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe that at all. Jesus <laughs> doesn't believe in weed, so I don't yeah. think you did. That's yeah, I crap. believe it was. Uh, <laughs> I believe it was uh, Colossians sixteen forty seven. Wow. Well, I'm just proud of you for getting a fucking book. Oh, for God's sakes. <laughs> Can you stop making me edit the show? Yeah, it's the worst. Say, yeah, Tim so wants to do a lot of edit little work already, as possible. Like two seconds into this podcast. Tomorrow's like... Father's Day, and I really don't want to edit tomorrow, dude. <laughs> I just want to point out that it My wasn't bad, bro. I really fucked up. Let's just, you know, let's just take it from the top. Let's <laughs> take it from the top. <laughs> the worst. You could just start it All right, here. Why don't, we, why don't we start over? We can start Yeah, let's it. take it from the top. Nah, nope. No, we're not we're keeping it in because this is fun. Uh, all right. Well, we're going to jump into a whole bunch of news. Of course, we're going to wrap up the second half of E3, which, well, we'll get to it. I just didn't think it was quite as chock full of news and excitement as the first half, but there was some stuff. So we'll talk about second half of E3, other news that's come out since then. Uh, I didn't realize Microsoft was going to do an extended, re- and it wasn't really reveals so much as like deeper dives into stuff that we knew existed. Um, but we'll talk about that. So, and, hey, before, and there are a few pieces of news that I want to get to that I think E3 kind of glossed over, but are pretty big deals. But what are we going to say, Derek? I was just going to say, before we jump into all that stuff, and that's the meat of our show, I was wondering if we could each, and we'll we'll keep it short because there's five of us now, could like give a review of what we thought of E3 overall. So not each show individually, just like... Love it. Did you like E3? Did you hate it? Why don't you start it off? I like that idea. You start it off. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so I think my short answer would be it was good. but And I won't say because PlayStation wasn't there. Definitely if they would have been there, it would have been better. But um, I just thought a lot of the shows overall were disappointing. Like Xbox probably had the best show I've ever seen them ever have. But other than that, I can't think of another show that I was like, yeah, that was that was good. Everything was pretty overall for me. I would give it a. You meh count the rate. summer game fest on Thursday as part of that from from the previous. Day. Yeah, let's go ahead and count that. So if we count that, I would then move that was it pretty the good. Meh up to solid. Okay, yeah, because that was pretty good. Right? I thought that was I thought that was a good show. Jeff Keighley I have to it, give yeah. Jeff Keighley some yeah, credit. Like, the actual cool Jeff. I'll give him some credit. Oh, um, I mean, spell, he spells, he spells his name it wrong. cool too. Yeah, he spells, <laughs> he spells it cool too. Spells his name wrong. Spells it G-O-S-H, but <laughs> but overall, after basically which that kickoff show and then Xbox were what the first real two shows. Yeah, they had Ubisoft after and that, a few others, but but after that it went downhill for me. Well, Jeff, what about you? Since he already called you out, what are your thoughts on E three ish stuff overall, including uh, the other stuff? I mean, you know, it was it was good. I it was good. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I wasn't over the moon or for anything until Xbox and Bethesda's um, yeah. joint conference. Like it was just oh crap moments over and over again um, during that conference for me. Uh, I, I liked. I mean, we're going to talk about Nintendo. I, well, I liked what Nintendo did for the most part. Um, every other show that I guess the summer kickoff, whatever it was, right? Whatever that title of that show was. So it was the Summer that Games was, Fest is yeah. his overall thing, and then kickoff was the event. So. Yes, the kickoff thing. Yes, that that was fun to watch too. So I mean, I had more fun 
than I did uh, feel general feelings of excitement or anticipation over what was announced. I ju- it was just like a fun time to be a nerdy AF gamer. Um, totally. As E3 should be. I was also su- mostly surprised that the pandemic, I know it caused a lot of struggles for certain developers that, I mean, they have to go into the office. Cert- definitely if, if they're in a different country, certain cultures are accustomed to only working in the office. Um, I was surprised at the amount of stuff we did get shown um, and that were announced for either this year or next year. Yeah. Like, it's, I was very it seems like things that. are picking back up into more of yeah, a normal sure. pace. 2022 is going to own it. It's yeah. just going to be insane. All right, Dan Freitas, what do you think, man? What, the overall thoughts on E3 and other shows around E3? I think if 2020 does stick or uh, most games do stick for 2020, uh, 2022, sorry. Um, then yeah, next year is going to the next year is going to be it sounded like you were doing like G-Unit or something <laughs> um, yeah next Stop year is going to be pretty bananas but I don't know I, I feel a little opposite of Jeff I, I honestly so I know that the pandemic hit a lot of those um, developers pretty hard so in the beginning it was a struggle but it seemed like after a while like they kept saying like oh like we've figured it out we've figured it out we've figured it out and I kind of actually thought there was going to be I don't know, maybe like overall two or three more like huge announcements than there really was overall. And I know that's like nitpicky because it's like two or three, but I don't, I, it, overall, I think it was okay. It started strong and then in the middle it went down and then went back up with Nintendo. So yeah, it was kind of like a, like a U shape, you know, good. And then it went back to, yeah. So, you know, what do you think, Kyle? Uh, I, I'm, I have to like separate the excitement from the announcements. My excitement of uh, of E three just being back after being literally canceled to literally not being around because of a COVID pandemic, to just having it back, sitting around with friends, watching the live stream Saturday and Sunday, uh, you know, watching all the developer or I'm sorry, the uh, journalists get like their hands on it and give their their takes on. Or not, they didn't get their hands on anything, but just watching and like give their takes on stuff. Like E three for me felt like it was back, and that on its own was magical. I will agree that there wasn't like a thousand things to be excited for, or, you know, even even like a plentiful amount. But like the things I was excited for hit pretty hard. So yeah. uh, I'm just happy E3's back. Uh, I, I hope that we Where continue to trend in a good way. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think that's. Uh, I agree with all of you. It was it was fun. I think um, having having any type of show like this where everyone pitches in to say we'll hold off a few announcements, however we would have announced it. And we're going to make E3 fun. I really appreciate the publishers who did that. Some of them didn't do that. I think you can make an argument that Square tried to with at least Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> and with this Final Fantasy Origins, who hates yeah. chaos, by the way. They hate chaos. Don't forget. Do they? <laughs> um, chaos. Yeah. Um, but, you chaos. know, and, and uh, other than Derek's right, other than Sony not being there, and it would have been cool if Sony somehow could have been like, all right, let's do the Horizon State of Play during this week. We don't have to say it's part of E3, but we'll just air it before the week or during the week like that could have felt like sony participated but anyway all that to say overall very fun but there were a lot of these uh quote-unquote conferences or presentations that just were useless i, I don't know why they bothered ha- like capcom Dude, capcom was, yeah. was a joke like why did take two even do take one? two like... just got on there to just show how progressive they were yes w- with yeah. equity and gaming and i listen that's an important topic but I... like don't say yes. you're gonna have an e3 presentation and then mm. talk about issues and culture and how it affects the gaming industry. Like, I'm yeah. sorry, that's just not interesting. So now, they showed if we literally were big... no games? No, they didn't show no, anything. Nothing. It was it was nothing. five talking heads talking about how if, woke they are. Which, I, again, I'm a, not trying to make fun, but... Ugh. If it had been a conference and you got all these different sessions to go through, and there's a session on equity in the gaming industry and that kind of thing, and you want to learn about that, to me, that's like, all right, that's a session you can attend if you're interested. But for them to be like, here's the Take-Two showcase, that's, I don't know. <laughs> It was, it was misleading. I mean, it's literally a lie, right? So, <laughs> yeah, I felt like you know? a lie to me, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, so overall, I thought it was strategy. good. Yeah, very. It was very odd, but it's um, a bold move, a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Def- it definitely. Did, did. Not. <laughs> um, but before we get in the news and stuff, I am curious about what you guys are playing and or watching. And I'll kick it off real quick with watching. I already talked about Breaking Bad a lot. 
did finish that. Probably the best show ever made. I also started yep. uh, finally Tim re uh, re watching. It's so uh, good, man! It like, really, I, it really is. And I think I'll watch it again too. I, I forgot how good it was. I, I think yeah. I didn't appreciate fully how good it was the first time I watched it through. So this time I feel like I've got a much greater appreciation for it. I watched the El Camino movie. Dude, loved that movie it. Rules. That movie rules. I loved it. So it's awesome. a great. Great standalone flick, by the way, too. But I think that's uh, Robert Forster's one of his last roles, too, I think because it was. he passed away yep. like shortly after yep. that. And, uh, yeah. I think it's easy to write off Aaron Paul, the actor, as like he can either do Jesse Pinkman or he's in crap movies. But like, if you really watch him, like he is really good. He is. Yes. He so plays good. that role. He's yeah. good, yeah. but he's so like amazing in that. Pr- Brian Cranston, like holy crap right. balls! Like is like it's just. Just but, the the like up the ups and downs of like what he goes through and like the mm-hmm. the moods and like the shift of like the personality back and forth like it's just insane because one minute you're like yeah no I totally am like on his side about like what has happened in his life and it makes sense and then like something happens some he does something I'm like holy shit you're an, you're just a jerk like well, it, but then and then it goes back and forth so. You know. What um what the El Camino movie confirmed for me was that Jesse Plemons and Will Hines from our group said this too. He strikes me as the next uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Like he just has that totally vibe. Yeah. He's got this weight. Like he's got so much confidence. Like every time he's on screen, he has terrifying confidence. Even mm. if he's playing a psycho killer or if he's playing a football player in Friday Night Lights or whatever role. Like, or the creepy a, neighbor in uh, Game creepy. Night. Yes. Night, yeah. which is an amazing uh, role. Yeah. Great movie, that's a yeah. good movie. That's it's, a good so, movie. it's super brings, fun. I've seen it like five times. He it's brings so much there. confidence and creepiness to the character of Todd, and his name is Todd, which is so like basic bro. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's just so. So I highly recommend the movie El Camino. It's a great epilogue for the Breaking Bad series. And then I jumped into, I'm oh. trying a Better Call Saul again. I had watched the first two seasons and liked it, and then I was kind of waiting for the third season. And when it finally aired, I never jumped back in so i'm re-watching those now with like kind of these new lenses and i'm really enjoying it you'll benefit from the binge on that one i think because it's a little yeah. it's like a little bit of a slower character study of a show so so uh, like what is really what is really like the deal with that show though like i know it's not totally the same vibes as breaking bad but like not at all. is it somewhat serious is it supposed to be it's like very so serious. It's, yeah. it is i think it's actually quite similar it's just different so it, it starts mm-hmm. off right away with you get a completely dialogue-free quick glimpse into what Saul Goodman's up to now, kind of mm-hmm. after everything after went down. The show, yeah. And that's all in black and white. And then it goes to color to kind of tell his story. And they use all kinds of hints without telling you that it's many years before this, before he ever became Saul Goodman. Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, and so it's kind of his origin story. And it's very, it, it's, it's a slow burn, but it's really good. They bring back characters from Breaking Bad you wouldn't right. expect. Yeah. Just a few moments yeah. that makes you go well, like, It's just a Whoa. performer's paradise. Like everybody is just putting 110% in. Uh, like it's just it's so many huge actors in this and all of them just, just putting in some of the best. It's a real, uh, it's a real star making performance too for uh, the actress wow. that plays Kim. Uh, oh, she's oh, oh. Amazing. She's, and she like fits into what I was saying earlier. It's just like, yeah, yeah she's just showing up and just putting it all in. Yeah. So, okay. So that's that's what I'm watching. I saw that I know that some folks are watching Loki. It's got a couple episodes out now, but like yeah, I said, with other Disney shows, I'm giving it a couple to build up, and then I'll watch a few at a time. But without spoiling, there's only anything, six episodes, by the way. So it's not. We only got four weeks left. So well, without I'm waiting anything, the four what, weeks. What do you guys think so far? Without spoiling anything, dude, I think this might be my favorite Disney Plus Marvel show so far, okay. which is saying a lot because I really liked. Well, we talked about it in the group, Tim. I really liked Falcon Winter Soldier. We mm-hmm. kind of had the same complaints, but I really liked it. And WandaVision, I liked maybe a little more than that. But this one is just, it's, it, I don't know, it's carved out its own identity compared yeah. to those other two. It feels like a totally different thing, even though it's clearly in the MCU. They talk about MCU storylines and happenings. Uh, all the time in the show. Does Loki preach to us about how politicians should behave and <laughs> mm-hmm. how yeah, we should? Yeah, that's first episode. They get it out of the way immediately. <laughs> okay, good. You know? That's good, at least. Yeah. <laughs> Rip the Band-Aid off. Yep, yep. <laughs> Uh, I agree every, with Love everything Jeff just said is spot on. I feel the exact same way about all the MCU Disney stuff so far in the order that he put it in. This is probably my favorite. I'm laughing so hard at this show. Oh my God, the jokes like, it's are It's genuinely so funny and Owen yeah. Wilson is just playing himself and... Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's am- I think it's I think it's hysterical, and it's uh, Hiddleston yeah. just like s- being sm- you know swarmy and uh, you know he, full of himself and like he's perfect like, in that role. Yeah, sure. just like and he's, he's playing, so animated and like right, oh, he's playing he's so the young Loki that just right. failed at conquering Super New York, so he's still very yeah. villainous. 
Got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you so know what's interesting be... with that actor with uh, Tom Hiddleston? I feel like when he's given the freedom to just let his natural swagger run free, he's great. Yeah. Yes. But then when you ask him to kind of be a little more of a kind of straight hero, like in the Kong Skull Island movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's he like he oh. is so forgettable in that role. Even though I, I yeah, like, I feel uh, like a lot of like Brie are. Larson both I think are pretty uh, are pretty forgettable in that movie. <laughs> well, everyone hates Brie Larson, right? So well, uh, whatever. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> if I'm on that online, but I don't, but I don't get it. We'll I don't it. know it's about fine. that one. Yeah, but. Yeah. All right, well, in for the movie... sake of time, I'm jumping on to uh, Eufy DLC is finished. Dan, was this worth the money? Is this worth the time for folks who perhaps are fans but not as mega fans as yourself? Is it worth the effort to get through Eufy DLC? I mean, if you if you care about this remake overall and you're invested and you want to, you know, you're going to play the next part in, you know, however many parts, 17 parts from now, um, then yeah, I, I think it's worth it. I mean, twenty bucks isn't a lot. Uh, t- it's it's tricky for me because I don't generally play DLC. Like whereas twenty bucks doesn't, it's not a lot of money. But as far as like how much time you put into this, whether you do a, a couple of the side quests, there's only really like a couple things. There's the the mini game, the Fort Condor mini game, um, and then there's like these uh, flyers that you go around and collect for the uh, Happy Turtle guy. Mm. Uh, a whole like Wu Tai reference. Um, so there's not a lot of like side stuff. It's it's pretty main uh, mainline like focused on the mainline getting from point A to point B of the storyline. Um, but at the very end, you get a little bit extra. Um, I don't want to say too much, but aside from like what's going on with Yuffie within this scenario, so yeah. just a little bit. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, it's one of those ones that I definitely will check out. Uh, mainly just because I think Derek, you bought it, right? Did you buy this DLC? I bought it. All right, so yeah, that's why I'll check it out. Um, but I, I am interested in it, but part of me is like, do I really want to jump in? Because I know it's not a super lengthy uh, experience, and so I'm like, do I want to wait until we have a better idea of when part two is going to come out? Then maybe I try to kind of use that as a buildup. I, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, um, I, I'm i replaying, seven, like, so today I was just like, screw it. I'm just going to replay Seven Remake okay. again for this my, third like, time? third or fourth i forget i mean i did platinum it um but i'm replaying it and like so integrate with the with the you know updated fidelity and so on and so forth dude this game with 60 frames is real nice (laughs) yeah it's real nice i'm sorry if this is common knowledge but like where is it in the story or do you play it from the menu or like how how does all that the yuffie dlc yeah yeah so once you have it basically triangle well, you, you hit, um, well, I guess depending on, well, it would just be PlayStation, yeah. So you hit R1 and it shifts over to another menu. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. So, on, okay, on so the it's, main... not, it's not actually in the store. Like, you, can you no, play so on it? the okay, main okay. menu, when you do new uh-huh. game continue and you see uh, Cloud's Buster Sword, if you hit R1, it just shifts over and you see Yuffie's, uh, you know, mm. Yuffie's star throwing I'll stuff I'm, I'm glad they did that. Week, so. I'm so sick and tired of games making it annoying to find the DLC. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Spider-Man was the only other game to do that, to my knowledge. So it yeah. feels like a PlayStation thing. Good job, PlayStation. Yeah. Well done yet again. Uh, now, Derek, uh, <laughs> I'm curious if you've been playing, whether it's Ratchet and Clank or the Yuffie DLC, or if not, what are you what are you playing this week? If you have time to play okay, anything. So... I haven't actually gamed really at all because I started a second job. So the oh, only thing God. I've kind of touched is I started playing Biomutant again last night. Um, that's okay. I, I like it, but I also don't. Um, I still think the combat could have been better if... Yep. I'm not going to get into it. There's just some stupid stuff, shortcomings that I... I mean, it's a swimming in sevens. It's It's got jank, you know, yeah. right? Yeah, so. pretty much. Um, and then, uh, what else? Oh, after Xbox's presentation, I really had an itch to go back to Horizon 4. Yes. So I re downloaded nice. that. Actually, I downloaded it on my laptop because I wanted to check it out. So um, I've been playing that a little bit, but that's pretty much it. Nothing really new. I do need to get back into Mass Effect 2. Oh, yes. there is one game I am playing Outriders. So I really, really oh, yeah. am enjoying Outriders. I was enjoying it before, but I walked away from it. Um, but are you I'm doing back. all solo, just single player? Are you trying to do co-op at all? How are you playing I actually that? started playing it again with Jesse White. He just had started the campaign, so I kind of went back and started from where he was. But then after him and I played a couple times, I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go back to my main character, and I'm going to try to beat the game. So I've been playing that. When I game, that's my main um, on Xbox. But when I only had access to my laptop last night, that's when I started playing 
Forza and Biomutant. But my main right now is probably Outriders. I do want to get through the campaign, not because I want to see the story through. I heard that it actually has a decent story, but because the presentation and cutscenes are so cheesy and dialogue, I'm like, I don't care. Um, It's just a super fun game. Like you know, it's crazy. uh, Colin Moriarty, one of the more negative people out there, and and then you know, at least he's got that that um, that what's the word I'm looking for? Reputation, whether it's fair or not. Um, he loves Outriders. He's like, it's one of my favorite games of the year. I can't, I'm so glad that they're hmm. making their squares digging into this. Like, he absolutely loves Outriders. So, you're definitely not alone. A lot of folks love it. Um, uh, and then I saw someone put on Ratchet and Clank. I put that on there. I added that on there for Kyle's sake because he had quite a journey with that game. <laughs> Ooh, Kyle, tell uh, me about this. Yeah, I uh, I've never played one of these games before. I'm not into like if you're a talking animal doing things in video games. Like, just <laughs> oh, hold out. on, hold on, Gaston, Gaston. is listening. Gaston uh, is yeah, listening. sorry, Gaston. Yeah, I'm sure you can hate about Metal Gear Solid or something later to hurt me or something. I don't know. Um, I mean, he can't. You can't. No, he can't. Him. You can't because it's impossible. Um, anyways, uh, I, I started playing this game. I, I think I played like an hour, hour and a half my first playthrough, and I go, I don't get it. <laughs> like the game looks really pretty you know it, it, like it plays really well you know uh, it, it's yeah. cute you know but like so i don't not know the mascot like, platform i know i mean i just came from mass effect which is like this yeah. like super yeah. epic ridiculous yes. you know so like i'm just i'm now I'm very this, different like, sci-fi takes oh, I, and i thought it was going to be a palate cleanser but it was really just more kind of like annoying to me that first you're flavor. like ben wyatt when everyone's freaking out about sebastian little sebastian yeah. <laughs> i don't get i, I, I don't, don't get it i don't get it at all it's kind of a small horse yeah, what's, what's the horse's deal? Does it <laughs> do like a trick or? It's kind of funny that you guys mentioned that because the concert I went to tonight, my pastor was playing and he did that song. Like he nice. did a whole like little Sebastian. Oh, no. little, the, oh, yeah. 5, 000, yeah, 5, candles for, in the wind. I, that's awesome. <laughs> so before he did the song, I had no idea what he was doing. He started like reading. It wasn't like a script. I guess he was kind of reading a script, but he's like, we just want to, you know. Special shout out to 10 years ago on this day, blah, blah, blah. And he starts talking dead serious, like somebody passed away. And he's just like, we want to we want to play this song in your dedication, Little Sebastian. And then he started playing. I have no idea what this is. And then at the end, he's like, in case you don't know, that's from Parks and Rec. That was from when (laughs) Chris Pratt used to be fat. Now you got to know your audience. Now, yeah. Kyle, it sounds like maybe that wasn't the end of your story, though. With yes, uh, I sat down and played it again, and like it all clicked. Like I started oh, getting more, wow. I started getting more weapons, and I was like, oh, so it's not just some generic shooter where you're just kind of like dodging and shooting, and because that's all it was at first, you know. I guess you could say that about a lot of games, but like, I don't know, it just wasn't my flavor. But then you start getting all these like really interesting weapons, and like yeah. this ridiculous set pieces start happening. I don't want to ruin big, anything. There's but... a big boss fight. That includes like a giant centip- flying centipede looking boss. Super. That, that's that's one of the first moments I was like, oh, that's, yeah. That kind of started to get its hooks in me again. Like, oh, yes. yeah, these games are yeah. fun. Yeah, that's, that's exactly the, the first thing. moment. And then yeah, there's a the... big giant robot thing later. And like that solidified. I go, OK, this yeah. game's cool. I just was being, an, you know, I was being well, an it's asshole. Like with any, <laughs> it's like with any game that has guns or unique guns. Like you want to like you have different like with Returnal, for example, people are like, what kind of gun did you use? And some would, have, yeah. you know, everybody has their preferences. Yeah. So it's. You well, just, every, you know, every gun is useful. So I'll get a gun and I'll go, yeah, I'll never use that again. And then yeah, like yeah. maybe an hour later, I'll, that's the only gun I'm using, you know? So yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. The guns go on a journey too. Cause they evolve as you sh- use them. Like they, mm-hmm. they, yeah. they get new features and stuff like that. And uh, they also have a, they have a topiary uh, weapon where you can turn them into garden uh, sculptures. Yeah. That's the so, one I'm specifically speaking sure. of. I'm like, I'm never going to use this. And but it's that's funny. the very first thing I throw down whenever I walk in now. You know which one is actually really powerful that I thought was a dumb idea at first was this pixelator. I was like, I don't... Yes. Like, I get it, but then you realize it's like a super-powered shotgun. Yeah, and yeah. You, like, turn and them into pixels them once, and then you can just shatter them into pixel pieces. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, this wow. is like a, fr- it's like a freezing yeah. shotgun. It freezes them, sort of, and then you can just blow them up. Yeah. It's great. It's cool. Yeah. So yeah, my opinion of it now is a uh, great game. You have a PS5, you have to get this. And game. gorgeous, like, right? Like so pretty. Oh, it's the prettiest game maybe I've ever seen. So I don't know. Pretty. Who's so the same? Um, and then I saw I don't know some tryhards playing Chicory, a colorful tale. <laughs> I don't know. I do want to hear about that. <laughs> Listen, I do want to say this because this is a Derek title. This is clearly a Derek title. Listen, I I actually uh, I am curious about this one for two reasons because I got it on my Steam wish list because it's the fe- people who made Celeste. And so I was really oh, curious. Uh, about, I mean, okay. Yeah. Sure. 
um, this I, it, it's hard to explain. Um, uh, it's definitely it's definitely not a dare game at all because uh, the main <laughs> the main weapon quote unquote that you have is a a brush and you can change the colors between oh the five. that one okay, yes yeah. and you can color in certain things because the whole world lost color and you have to restore color whatever um, so steam having it in steam wishlist is the right move because that's the platform to play it on because I have it on PS5 and brushing with the joystick is a nightmare. Uh, you need to play it on PC if you're going to play it because brushing with a mouse is going to be way faster. Can you um, plug the mouse into the PS5, maybe? I'm not going to try that. Uh, okay. so, <laughs> I mean, okay. I didn't know. I just, it's a possibility. Uh, yeah. Um, you, you know. it's, uh, it's just, yeah, there are actually boss fights in it, too, where, like, some sometimes uh, the boss's, like, eyes will light up a certain color and you have to color over it really fast. It it's, it's, doesn't sound appealing at all, but it reviewed really well. Mm. um it's it's it's, a, it's an artsy pretty, game, right it's it's you know it's unique Literally. but I, it's a hard sell it really is um so yeah i am the tryhard that put that in there uh <laughs> I'm, I'm also really deep in mass effect 3 and i yeah, just got not regretting this decision to add jeff at all, <laughs> <laughs> not regretting it at all. well we need hey, he's about to talk about mass effect he's gonna say mass effect yeah <laughs> i'm in mass some... effect 3 i just need had some to variety lure... besides swimming in the seven games derek i right? just had to um <laughs> I just had to lure a uh, the mother of all Thresher Maws to uh, a Reaper to kill a Reaper for me while I yes cured the Genophage <laughs> yes yes which is like one of the best missions I think the series has ever offered. Uh, it was just there were like stakes. Which Mass Effect this is on? It's, it's on three. three. And that's not possible though. Everyone hates Mass Effect three. So no. yeah, remember you're supposed as to soon hate as it. I beat that, I messaged <laughs> Kyle and I said. People hate this? Like, yeah, I, I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You had no idea. Like, when I beat that game, I was looking around. I go, we all hate this game? Like, yeah. Like, okay. We hate this, right? It's so baffling. Because, like, from the very beginning of the game, the Reapers are there. Yep. Like, crap hits the fan right away, and, yep. and it yep. doesn't let up. Never stops. And you're just building up war resources to help your fight. It's a war game now. It's a war... So, yeah, not really strategy in the in the gaming sense, but you are trying to strategize how you're going to fight the Reapers. Yeah, uh, with what resources? So I mean, that's it makes it a totally different entry from the previous two, but I think they're all kind of different in their own ways. They all um, have different themes. I feel like. Yeah, like the first one's more like revenge. Chill. Yeah. First one's first one's chill. You can just drive around on a planet. Yeah. Um. Uh. You know, the second one's kind of more ri- rigid in terms of story. Like follow the story. Um, Suicide mission. Yeah, yeah, and there's it's like there's a high more, story. Yeah. It's more about yeah, yeah, it's more about loyalty and stuff like that. Uh, and yeah, the third one's straight up war the game. War epic. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's it's so freaking good, man. Um, and then uh, I'm, I think Dan played it too. Stranger of Paradise demo finally got working. Stranger of Paradise, Final yeah. Fantasy Origin. Yes, it does work now. Yes, it does work. It is decent. That, yeah, is, that do, is my opinion dude, on it. It's just decent. <laughs> why? Why does the main character talk the way that he talks? <laughs> I d- I don't. I don't uh, understand. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm kind of used to that American voiceover on Japanese oh. games. I don't know. But, yeah. But the, uh, so, so the guy that looks like anime sounds like an anime dude, and it's like, all right, that works because that makes sense. And then yeah. you have the you have the black character, and he sounds like a black dude, so that makes sense. And then you just have like what this guy mean? that looks like. Hold well, on. What do you mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds, like <laughs> sounds like a black dude. Sounds like a black dude. What do you mean? Um, sounds like a black. And yeah. then you just have this guy that's just like, Chaos! and yeah, okay. But sure. but like sometimes he doesn't. But then like when he's talking, there are some cutscenes where he's like talking and he sounds relatively somewhat normal. But then in the middle of the fights, he's doing like, Chaos! like he just sounds like a different person. Yeah, uh, and it the, it just oh, sounds man. bad. On that it just, trailer, they were hilarious. On that. Uh, Go read the just, YouTube comments. They're so funny. It, They're it's really just the, the delivery, though. Oh, I mean, the, the whole the chaos thing. Have been funny, yeah. Yeah. The chaos thing is is funny. But like it's just the delivery is so bad that it's just like I don't even care about this guy. Yeah. Um, I but I mean it. it's it's interesting. It, it, it's it, it's fun, you know. It's a fun. It's got some fun combat. It's uh, not. It's not quite. So Jesse was saying like I don't know who this is for because it doesn't feel like a Final Fantasy game. And it's like yeah. I'm I'm reserving judgment of that because it's not the full game. Like I don't know if you're going to be visiting a bunch of different areas and it's going to feel more Final Fantasy at certain mm-hmm. parts. But it it. Yeah, I don't know. You know what would be really cool? And I'm not saying they should be as on the nose as Ubisoft is being, but I like what they're doing with their planned DLC where you get to go back and revisit Voss and Paganman and Joseph. Hmm. And I'm not saying that 
Final Fantasy Origins should somehow be that on the nose with their characters. Maybe they want to be a little more subtle, but I would love if they would somehow tie in backgrounds of Kefka and Sephiroth. Like, I don't know what it, how they would tie it in, well, but or like that's what pieces what, um, they could use. I would love if they actually did that instead of, I have a feeling it's going to be a full story with new characters, new enemies, and then at the end or somewhere in the middle, there'll be little Easter eggs, little tiny hints at how this connects. It just doesn't feel like it's going to be an overt well, origin so story, but I could be supposed, wrong. Well, this is it's called origin because it's referring to Final Fantasy One. It takes I, place I in understand. that universe, right? Um, I understand. Well, so but it, it made me want an actual yeah, origin story. I feel no, I, and I agree sure, with you. Yeah, of, especially if they're gonna like bring like, hey, now you're gonna fight, you know, sin, yeah. you know, but or like or something like that, you know. But like the th well, that's what the city is, but in a way, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, this is what's weird about this is, um, and and Nomura has stated it's not like a reboot of the original one. It's not a sequel, a remake. Um, but but Garland, but Garland, yes, just can't. <laughs> but Garland is in it, and Garland is the main uh, villain of Final Fantasy One. So it's like I don't really quite know. I guess maybe it's a reimagining. I don't. Yeah. I don't really. Know. Mm. We'll see. We'll see when the game yeah. comes out. But yeah. I don't know. All right. Well, there's. I a... did play a, a game that Tim played as well, so we'll we'll talk about it. There's a, there's a few games that I want to make sure that you guys don't waste your time and money on that I have at one point said, hey, I'm kind of excited for this. And the first one I want to mention is Open Country. Don't buy this game at all on any platform. <laughs> I like the idea of going out to the American West and doing some hunting and crafting and kind of just surviving kind of in Montana type of mm. place. But the gameplay sucks. The voice acting is so cringy. Like, I've never heard anything so bad before. And they try to set you up with some like bartender guy who's like, you know what? I like the cut of your jib type of a conversation, yeah, you know? The screenshots <laughs> look good. That's so disappointing to hear. And so it's real bad. Not doesn't look good and is not fun to play. I tried some hunting, crafting, building, and I was like, this mm. sucks. It's just not Valheim. So, it's not it's Valheim. just it's just not good. Uh, I also played Hella's Other Demons. It's not my thing, but if you like that sort of uh, kind of arcade style single screen game where enemies kind of come in from off screen and you're just supposed to dominate that area that you see. You're not supposed to, it's not really oh. going to scroll very much. It scrolls up and down a little bit and maybe later levels start to scroll, but it's really just all about taking on wave after wave of enemies with, t it's just uh, tons of bullets and you're swinging your weapon and it's just, it's crazy. Uh, it's not my thing though. So I tried it like 30 minutes and then I was like, I'm good. I'm, I I'm get that. It, was, it was free on the Epic Game Store. It's free till this Thursday if you want to oh, try okay. it. Um, and then thanks to Xbox, I was able to play Backbone and Medieval Dynasty. And Medieval Dynasty, I don't know if that's on console, but that's a Game Pass game preview. It's like early access. Mm -hmm. um, oh. So Medieval Dynasty already caught my attention. It was on sale, and I, was, I almost spent 20 bucks on it. I'm glad I waited because Xbox added it um, as a Game Pass game. And it's, it's okay. It's a first-person Again, survival crafting game, but it's set in medieval times. Obviously, it's pretty. Oh, old. I've seen previews of this. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, some of the concepts of it are cool. I think I might keep giving it a go, but I don't, I don't love the way like hunting feels, like throwing a spear, and the way the animals move. It just it still feels like an alpha build, and maybe it is. I keep jokingly um, saying Valheim, but it's like it, you kind of can't help but compare it to Valheim. Well, <laughs> Anything that's, that's like yeah. hunting that's or survival, part, like... Is, like all that stuff is fun in Valheim. Like I found each right. little element fun. The only thing I don't like in Valheim is fishing, so I don't really do the fishing. But sure. everything else is pretty fun. And this one has some fun things, but after a while, I was like, man, I'm literally walking around. I can't even enjoy the scenery because I'm looking down trying to see where the sticks and rocks are to pick up because those are <laughs> like I have to collect stuff at the beginning. So, but yeah, I yeah. do I do know that you can build whole villages and invite people to come and you have to keep their mm. their like mm. happiness up and like give them business and so it's kind of what we talked about Dan with Valheim. It'd be fun to invite NPCs. So apparently it has that. I just that seems so far away. Like when you first mm. start the game, it's like this is gonna take me days yeah. are these do, do you know if this is these are the same guys working on the wild west dynasty because that's the one i want to play i don't know i think because I, I think they make dynasty games and and one of them is a wild west one that's coming soon and it's first person okay. same concept yeah and it's not the town. prettiest game ever but it's not ugly either it's just when you get up close to the animals like oh and by the way the bison there's bison in a medieval game which is weird but anyway maybe that's normal um but they don't like you at all like they'll kill you real fast so don't mm. go near them and uh anyway the deer kind of looked like uh almost like jpeg images and then they would kind of like, move. <laughs> <laughs> move i was like this doesn't look good they so, just slide over like it, it didn't amazing. it didn't look real like great, somebody so. with somebody you could see his hand just going doo, doo, but doo, again doo, like, i'm a deer you just got game pass on your pc you can give ah. that one a try you can mm. give uh this next one a try too and that's backbone 
Yeah, that's the one I played as Speaking well. Speaking of talking animals, Kyle, this is right up your alley. Yeah. Oh, right, great. Up, right. This is forward this here. Is, yeah, this is Kyle. This is Kyle City right here. Back one has some really cool visuals. Uh, yeah. yeah, and it's you know it's all these anthropomorphic uh, creatures. So you're a raccoon private investigator, and everyone else oh, is you know, a polar bear, okay. a squirrel, or a fox, or you know you got all kinds of animals in this. But there's a very clear they they have a whole lot of um, how do I want to say this. Uh, it's almost like different races as well because they talk about how well the mm. apes live on that side of town and we don't, haven't seen apes in a long time. They they think they're better than us. Like they they talk about the different species as if they're almost a different race in a way. Yeah, very. That part's interesting. And like there was a bar you're supposed to go into for your first case. Yeah, and he's like, well, this is mostly canine ladies in there, and that's yep. you know yeah. too high K- class for me. Cats, right? Yeah, and, yeah, exactly. So mm. like, there's something about the animal species the segregation. There's mm-hmm. there's certainly some messages there, but it gets real dark real fast at the end of that first case. I was like, holy crap, this game is like oh no, wolf, wolf <laughs> I'm among not prepared. Us. Yeah, I haven't gone that far. Wolf Among Us <laughs> levels of like, oh, this is this is kind of gross. Oh um, no, <laughs> I pers- I proceeded in the game and it's interesting, but I do think it gets like r- the story gets really ridiculous towards the mm. end, but still interesting. The visuals are good. Yeah. It's on Game Pass, so give it I'm a try. interested in it so far, and I like that the conversations can go. Yeah. It seems like they can go different ways. Oh, they definitely can. I actually yeah. clicked a little too fast a couple times. I was like, whoops. And it, but thankfully, they let you kind of scroll yeah. up to see what you said. And the, the language is R-rated, so like you have <laughs> you have squirrels telling you to F off and stuff. It's All the oh, time. Yeah? Yeah. All the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now you have Derek's attention. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. If it's like Conquer adjacent, that's like the only type of like uh, animal talking. Well, they're all very like all slender versions of these animals for the most part. There's a couple mm-hmm. of them bigger, but and it, it's it's. It's intriguing. It's just I've had a bunch of like janky gameplay moments where mm. there's one section where the puzzle requires you to figure oh, out the there's yeah. these things you have to put on top of these images to determine a certain code. And so you have to be able to move them around on the screen. And it was letting me move one at a time. And then I had to back out, wait for the game to allow that thing to trigger again, go back in and move another thing. So it was just there are a few That's little things that just seemed like they weren't fine tuned. That's all I'm saying. Mm. Um, but it's 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 decent and might be Gaston's thing. It's reviewing about that far where it's like there's some gameplay that's frustrating. So it's like a six or seven for a lot of reviewers. It's an adventure. Apparently. Yeah, it's an adventure game with some mild puzzle elements. Yeah. It's it's not a and very <laughs> dialogue heavy. Uh, the last one I'll mention real quick. This game is surprising me, and I think I'm really hooked on it. We'll see if it sticks. Is Loop Hero? Oh I'd, yeah, we talked I'd about. I heard this before. about this game a few months yeah. ago. Mm-hmm. It's got some of the worst visuals you'll ever see. In terms of like, here's the little map and your characters moving. Like it looks like an Atari game, like sure. that level of visuals. Wow. And then of course, when the characters come up to talk, then it's more it's hand drawn illustrations of the characters talking. But the concept is so cool, and I gotta explain this to you because you might like it. I got it for five bucks thanks to the Epic Game Sale, so I feel like I'm really getting my money's worth. But anyway, you start out, you go on this expedition. You basically you start off going on an expedition, and it randomly generates a loop, and it could kind of you know it looks like kind of like a racetrack basically. And there's your little pixelated character at a campfire, and you start making your way around. And at first, it's just these little green blobs that you st- start fighting. You don't fight. You actually just you have to either pause the game or you let it go. So your character works mm-hmm. through, encounters the creature, starts fighting him. And that, character, that uh, creature will drop a card and sometimes an item. And that card could be like, you know, add rocks or mountains or meadows to the, to the overall board. And those things all have some kind of either bonus or detriment to you. And you have to decide if you want to play them and, and if you want to hang on to them. Because if you play them and then you work your way through it and survive it, you're going to get tons of loot. And okay. so it's one of those it's – a, it's a risk-reward thing. And then also with the items you get, it's tons of loot. There's all kinds of weapons, shields, armor, these special rings with boost that could boost your power. So you can increase all kinds of stats and – you know, you can hit multiple enemies at once, but after a while, the, your board gets really full, and you've got spiders and goblins and ghosts and all kinds of stuff coming at you, and it gets really intense. And every time you pass your campfire, that's your only way to leave with everything intact. If you try to do another round and you get killed, you only leave with thir- randomly 30% of whatever you gathered will stay with you. If you escape before you're back, you get to keep 60%, but you didn't die, but you still lose a bunch. But if you make it back to your campfire and leave then the game just kind of stops. That round stops. You go back to your main camp, and then you upgrade. You can build and add on all these bonuses, get, give yourself potions, upgrade your your stats permanently. You can unlock new classes. Listen, this game is ridiculous. It's so good. I, didn't I heard know I good would like things. It. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I heard good things. I didn't realize I would like this. I'm actually not sure. Is it on other platforms? I'm not sure, but it's 
it's fantastic. I love it. Mm. Um, it has no business to be this good. I looked at the screenshots and I laughed out loud. I was like, why am I buying this? <laughs> but it's, uh, it's really, really fun. Um, so I recommend it if that appeals to you. All right, we got to get into the news. Thank you guys for uh, sharing what you're playing and appeasing me with going through my list of stuff. Um, this is that time right now where there's not a major new game out. Don't get me wrong. I love Ratchet and Clank, and I'm playing that alongside with the kids when I have time. But that's kind of like a summer game I'll kind of play on and off throughout the summer. It's not an RPG where I'll get lost if I jump back in in a few weeks. So other than that, there's not really a major game out. So I'm kind of doing stuff like this, trying out little games that are free or that I bought on sale and never tried or Game Pass. So that's kind of the mode I'm in at the moment. So, uh, all right, let me go through some news and um, feel free to jump in if you've got a thought on any of this stuff. We we do want to get to the Nintendo Direct presentation. That's how we'll wrap it up. But some other news that I thought was interesting. Um, the Medium is no longer an Xbox exclusive as of September 3rd. It's going to be uh-huh. dropped on the PS5. <laughs> and they're going to be adding some DualSense features that they have not the, specified. Literally the one Xbox Series <laughs> X exclusive that yeah. launched with the right. freaking console. You lost it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so funny. Well, just uh, so DualSense you know, would make that game pretty cool. The game went from being mediocre to now it's like a 9, yep. 9.5 Easily. all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah. All the people that kind of... I don't know how many bump, you know. Was Xbox. It's, uh, my hope is that if you pull the triggers in all the way, it becomes fun. That's what I'm hoping. So Yeah, uh, well, I... Yeah. <laughs> they actually add combat to the PlayStation 5 version. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's fair. I, kept, uh, I got to a part in that game where, like, you have to have an orb of light around you, yeah. and my, my light kept, like, disappearing right before I got to the end of the the hallway of moths or whatever. You didn't charge up enough, man. You didn't charge I, up. I'm like, what the heck? I'm, I'm using as much as the game gives me every single time. Well, I, I must be doing something <laughs> wrong, and I just lost patience with it. And never just went wait back for the it. Sony version. That one will work perfectly. Uh, I, I beat the game. The story is great, but there's like, I, I, I'd almost rather it just be. I like liked the similar. story. Yeah, the way yeah. it wrapped. I agree. The way it wrapped up. Like, yeah. when we talk, we talk best story. That'll be at least be considered at the end. You know, I liked it, but yeah, but there wasn't much to it. No, it's not fun to, it. not no, fun not to fun play. play. Yeah. I think I played like two or three hours, and that's uh-huh. what intrigued me was, I was like, oh, you know, even though I'm not a guy who cares about story that much anymore, it's like, I, I, I want to see how this one plays out, but I, like Jeff, I don't know if I got stuck as much as I was just like, oh, I don't feel like trying to figure this out, this is <laughs> not fun, it's yeah. janky, I'm, I've got to move on. But pretty like, at times, I, like some of the visuals were good, but yeah. anyway. That'll be on PlayStation September third. This is why Sony didn't I'll have a show. They just got to say, they just got to sit back. Thank you. Uh, the, Sony just got to sit back and let the news about them keep coming out. That's why they've been quiet all E3. <laughs> yeah. Well, things um, got announced for them, and they're like, yeah, or in general, and they're like, us too. We have that too. It's true. Because to by <laughs> by the time you hear <laughs> this, we yeah, we time, have the same. By, by the time you hear this, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven will be back on the PlayStation Store. <laughs> Yeah. Um, eight months later all right yeah. like six, seven whatever yeah <laughs> yeah it's uh awesome great i kind of had forgotten it wasn't on the ps store uh, i can't believe it took this long <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm i'm shocked honestly that's yeah. i know the game still has according to some people that still play it some issues but like that's ridiculous Come i've, on, I've heard that a lot of the fixes have really helped it a lot but mm-hmm. i don't know if that's true or not um mm. but speaking of uh well, this is I guess this is a different kind of negative news. That's negative just that, like, it's weird that PlayStation kept it off their store for this long. Yeah. Um, but this is some negative new for, news for Xbox fans, because this is one that I got hyped for last year when they kind of re-revealed it, and that was Everwild, which mm-hmm. Rare's developing. It's now reportedly, this could be false, but reportedly been rebooted internally. They just weren't happy with the progress or what was happening, and they're essentially starting from, I don't know what Scratch merely means. Are they keeping the some of the visual aspects. I don't know what that means, but they're rebooting development and targeting 2024. So I don't know if that means we're keeping all these basic building blocks and we're going to rebuild or we hate the way it looks. And I, like, I loved the way it looked. So we'll I see. Yeah. To, yeah, I thought it looked great. I we'll liked, what, yeah, I liked that t- uh, teaser trailer that they showed. So apparently this game was kind of revealed a while ago and then sort of re-revealed or kind of updated last year with that trailer they showed. And then, yeah, now it's, quietly just been not talked about and now there's a report saying this so um we don't have to talk about take two's showcase where i talked about that it was an entire <laughs> showcase about no equity tip, 
Tim, we got to talk about our feelings, how we're going to wow. treat each other. We're, we're five talking heads. We can do a showcase right now. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And we're all white dudes, so let's yeah. not talk about this. Um, you know, I just want to express that I just feel like Derek doesn't listen. He never <laughs> listens to me. He just doesn't listen. And, you know, oh. it, my heart, my heart, it hurts, you know. Derek, it would be easier if you would just tell him, you're right, I don't listen. Then we can all just move on. <laughs> or is he just frozen because he, he just backed out? He might have. Okay. Hey, this this will be a good new console for you guys who can't get your hands on a PS5 or Xbox Series X. No worries. And television has you covered. Their new Amico console is coming out in October. It's this little handheld kind of yes. throwback machine. Uh, you have to just go check it out to see what I'm talking about. It's just it's going to have all these little simple arcade games that are going to range from like two bucks to eight bucks. There might be more than that, but that's all I could find on it. Is it's pretty basic little arcade stuff, but um. And television, still around. Didn't realize they were still a thing. Um, one of my favorite little indie games that, I, that was kind of a surprise for me last year was Far Lone Sales. I think it came out before that, but that's when I discovered it was last year. And they have a sequel coming out called Far Changing Tides. This game is really cool. It's one of those totally dialogue-free. There's no description of what to do, really. You're just this little character who finds a big uh, vessel to that you have to repair. You have to start providing it with fuel and fixing different pieces of it and then navigate your way through this desolate landscape. Well, now it's all water-based. So now you find this water vessel. You're a different character and you're trying to navigate through all these water puzzles and you have to keep finding fuel and other pieces to fix it up. It's just kind of really creative, cool little game. I'm um, supposed to come out this year. Uh, probably all platforms, I'm guessing. Sounds so, exhausting. Have fun. I like Far Lone Sales. <laughs> it's, uh, it's great. It's a great game. Highly recommend I just saw this rumor today. I thought I'd throw this on here. I thought this was exciting, uh, if it's true, and that is that the Castlevania Advance Collection has been rated in Australia for a multi-platform well, launch. I mean, we'll see. It's Konami. So. It's Konami. Mm, yeah. Who knows? Easy but, money, um, though. Super easy money. Just put it out there. Well, if it, so if it, it is the Game Boy Advance Collection, yeah. that includes Circle of the Moon, Harmony of Dissonance, and Aria of Sorrow. Uh, Those Circle, are all of, the Moon, Circle of the Moon is my favorite in the entire franchise. Everyone loves these games. They're, they're excellent, though. They are yeah, all three excellent. of those are amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that'd be cool if they did that. Um, but multi-platform launch, that would, sounds like it would be on everything. But we'll see. Um, here's another rumor I thought was interesting. Speaking of Final Fantasy VII Remake, is... Site tracker Epic Data, so apparently he's also been, he or she, sorry, has been reliable in Day. spotting database listings in the past that have leaked <laughs> accurately. So who knows if this is true or not, but they spotted Final Fantasy VII Remake and the remaster of Alan Wake. Oh, Both give me it. Oh, give me it. I still no, need to play that Alan game. Alan Wake would no. be so yes. great. More people having options. How dare they? Uh, How dare If you yeah. missed Alan Wake too bad. you know, That would be but... huge if Epic Games got it and Steam didn't. That'd be amazing. <laughs> For I mean for Final because Alan makes already on Steam I think right right yes right. yeah it is um, but for Final Fantasy VII remake who, whatever platform gets that outside of PlayStation that's a huge win for them um, Nintendo Treehouse employees Nate and Bill both confirmed that Bayonetta three is still in the works I know people were asking about that but they were being interviewed I forget which show they were on but they were asked point blank about it and they said it's still being worked on it's progressing well was their PR type response sure hmm. but sure it's not being it's not All been right. dropped if they didn't look at each other like ever oh, while it's gonna come out first ever yeah it might it might <laughs> um so bayonetta 3 is still in the works also hellblade 2 so they showed this behind the scenes video i don't know if you watch the extended xbox stuff mm -hmm. um or what do we call it derek it's a hell trash is that what we call it i, I can't remember um, trash blade Sounds trash blade. Blade. yeah, yeah. Trash blade. um but they showed some behind the scenes stuff and uh one of the Ninja Theory reps, I'm not sure who he is, if he's like president or CEO or grandmaster or whatever they call oh, him. Uh, he basically just said they w didn't want to just make a simple sequel. They wanted to make something much more ambitious. And part of me goes, you're calling it Hellblade 2, though. So, like, it <laughs> seems like a sequel. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we That's learned during this that it's, it's early on. Like, this game is not close. Uh. So uh, they said that they've created what he described as a chunky slice of the game so far <laughs> you say chunky slice chunky slice was the quote <laughs> and right. it, will, it will they'll begin to develop the full game at some point in the future which sounds like this isn't even so, so what exactly I, I when i heard about this i messaged jesse white and i said i think what's happening is i think microsoft 
and I'm not saying they're they're manipulating or doing anything like that. I think they probably went to Ninja Theory and said, "Hey, we're gonna throw a bunch of money at you guys. We want you guys to make a bigger game." Like the original was smaller mm-hmm. in scope. I think yep. that all they're gonna do is they're gonna make still a, a still a story driven game. I think it's going to be bigger. Though. I think you're right. Not yeah. maybe not open world, but it's gonna be more to it. So I think that's what he's hinting at when he says we want to make something different i think he's saying we're not going to make hellblade 2 look exactly like hellblade 1 we're going to make it bigger there's going to be more to it maybe more systems more you know gameplay maybe it will be more open i'm hoping it will be a little more open doesn't have to be open world but i'd like it to be bigger open areas i would really love it if that's the case because then i'm like yeah whatever take your time and make something that expands that world and and i'd like them yeah. to do something better with the combat i thought I they too. had something semi-unique by using you know sound but i don't feel like it ex- it was executed very well so yeah yeah the combat was not my favorite part of the game it wasn't horrible but i'm with you it needs to be improved so all right I wonder if the chunky slice was kind of their original scope, their vision for the That's sequel. That's like, what I was thinking. And then now they're like, oh, we need an open world. And I think, um, who, knows? who knows? I think that's actually what it's called. Hellblade 2, Chunky Slice. Chunky Slice. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Send you as Chunky I really Slice. I really think they were further, <laughs> I think they were further along in this game. And I have a feeling Microsoft, after they bought them out, was like, we want something grander. We're going to pay for a new studio. We're going to pay for new hires. We're going to invest a lot in you guys. Because I'll be honest with you, I don't think people, and this is coming from a guy who trashes on Hellblade. um, Ninja Theory is like one of the most talented studios to me. So that is a studio being bought by Microsoft that if they really are are investing in them like I think they should, they could be huge for these guys in the future. Like making big time hits like um, maybe not at Naughty Dog level, but somewhere around there. Yeah, I agree. I, and I actually think it's one of those cases where the first game could be like, hey, that showed a lot of promise, but you should see that they did with the second game and they really it created this insane franchise. So I would love that. I would love that. Um, all right, moving on to some of the showcases we saw. Listen, Capcom... <laughs> Why did they have a showcase? So they announced. I have no they, idea. They announced I mean, that Resident Evil Village DLC is in development. Okay. But they uh, just said it though. That's that's all they said. We're working on it. <laughs> yeah, we're um, doing it. Yeah. The re the reverse uh, multiplayer is launching in July. Which no one cares. cares. Um, there's a Monster Hunter Stories demo launching on eShop uh, this coming week on the 25th. Could have been a t- could have been a tweet. Could have been. <laughs> Could have been tweet, yep. right. and, uh, your progress will carry over, by the way, from that. I am going to try the demo because I don't know that I'll buy that full game right out of the gate. Um, the Great Ace Attorney. I don't know if that's a new game or a collection. It is. It actually does look interesting, but like again, that could have that could have just been like a trailer that they just put know, on shot YouTube. out there. Yeah, yeah. And this. Then... Yeah. I I put literally nothing else. I could be wrong. Did I miss anything? No, I, you didn't. No, that was it. Oh well, the esports crap. Like oh, that's with, why I put that. Which okay. could have been oh, a yeah, separate no thing. Nobody like, cares. No one cares about that. I turned it off at esports. That was I, I was hope, so I, I was there's an e e e athlete esports athlete <laughs> listening to this uh, that gets offended. No one cares. There was That's so my much whole career you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it should. There was so much job. unbelievable, unbelievable potential with this, and they yeah. just like it's like why did this even? This is this is the stuff that pisses me off with E3 though. Is like we gotta have something in there. Just toss something together. It's like, but you end up just pissing people off. Would have been better anything. not That's to a go. Good point. Yeah, don't go. like you know. And it's like really, just, I'm not like I'm not like actually you said, pissed. Just, but, just put know. a put a tweet out there that yeah. says you know you know it's E3 week, so we want to announce at least one or two things. Yeah. You don't have to do a freaking conference about it. No, but when Dude, you do a it's, conference. It's like, Oh, go, ahead, go ahead, Kyle. Go ahead, Kyle. Oh, I was just going to say, when you do a conference, I'm thinking Dragon Dragon's Dogma 2, you know? Like, right. Devil May Cry no, 5. A, me- a Mega or, you know, Man, like, get- Mega yeah, Man. Yeah, Mega Man Legends yeah. 3, you know? Yeah. Like, some, like, you know, something big. And, like, they were like, nah, we're just going to show you a bunch of, like, whatever. Resident okay, Evil thanks for, sho- Resident thanks for showing Evil up, 4, I guess. You know? It's true. Yeah, whatever. That's a good point. <laughs> Yeah. It's kind of like when you're at work and you are in a meeting and everyone's just thinking this could have been an email. I don't know why we're yeah. all <laughs> right, here. Right, yeah. And it's like two hours long. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yep, what yep. are we doing here? Just rambling. Um, all right. Well, let's move on to the one that matters, really. This is one we need to get through for our show today as well. And that's the Nintendo Direct presentation. Nintendo 
they did have a direct earlier this year, and I think it had been about 16 months since we had heard from them before that one. So that one, there was a huge buildup, you know, high expectations, at least from folks like me. It it delivered to specific audiences, but I thought overall as a Nintendo fan, even if it's not something I love, I can still be like, yeah, that's cool. They're announcing stuff. That's great. I felt like that one was a pretty big letdown. Doesn't mean it didn't have anything. I was just right. like, oh, the reach, the reach wasn't as about. big on that one for sure. There was, like, they, I was they like, usually have something for everybody in that one. They didn't. There was they didn't nothing really show up for, for the rest of twenty one of twenty twenty one for me. Like, I'm mildly interested in Mario Golf as a fun kind of distraction for the oh, summer. Oh yeah, I'll get that. But there's yeah. there's nothing that I'm like I am hyped for. So I kind of just sat back and was like, really, twenty twenty one is gonna feel like twenty twenty for Nintendo. Like, if you're not an Animal Crossing fan, there's nothing for you. That's just kind of how it felt. So this one to me, when it was all said and done, and we'll go through them. I just have much more positive feelings about and even though I'm not going to like rush out to buy every single game that's coming out. Right. They seem to be hitting a better stride again of like, yeah, about every six weeks or so. Here's a game. Here's a game. Here's a, and then in 2022, they're going to kick things off with that new Pokemon game. Assuming it arrives on time, it might get delayed. Um, but we, they have a couple other big 2022 games that they talked about. So I'm starting to feel a little more optimistic about Nintendo. And there are some things this year that I, I have to look forward to personally. So there's there's those two sides that it's like me personally, did I like it? And there's the did they do a good job overall right. mm -hmm. outside of what? I Yeah, like. it wasn't Breath of the Wild slash Mario Odyssey level, but, you know, it, it was solid. I, th I, thought, solid. I, actually, I would say yeah. it's, I would say it was good and it wasn't yeah. like their most amazing. One, but I thought it was a good. That's where I'm at with it. Yeah. Yeah. Good direct. You know, it started off and I <laughs> I was actually sitting in this chair <laughs> and when it first started off, I went like, oh, here we go. Oh, God. Like it was that kind of opening because it was it's always smash. smash. It was a new Smash Fighter announced. It's uh, is it Kazuya? Did I get his name right? Ka Kazuya. Kazuya. Okay. Yeah. But I spelled it right. Okay, from yeah. Tekken, and uh, they're gonna have. I don't know if it's a full direct for that or some yeah, sort the, of the twenty eighth. Yeah, Sakurai's gonna do. They always do the like actual like they break it down like it's literally like a half hour plus of like being more specific with the characters. Yeah, so. that's not overkill at all. Cool. Um, wow. and so. <laughs> hey, Smash Brothers is great, Tim. How dare you? If it you match the buttons so with this character. It'll do the same stuff. Listen, the trailer for this was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's fine. Uh, have fun with it. Uh, Life is Strange Remastered Collection is coming yeah. out on Switch. Woo! And Play it on the go. There it goes on the go. Left. We don't know when, but that one's going to be out sometime this year, they said. But we do know that True Colors, the sequel, is also going to launch day and date on the Switch with the you other. Can you can experience uh, feelings powers on the Switch. All the feelings. You know, All the feelings. Terrible. Why, why would it? Why would they do anything? I'm about MP? surprised it took this long for Life is Strange. Not a very taxing game to come. That seemed like a no yeah, brainer. That's kind of strange to me too. Whatever. Life. Hey, what well, you know what they say? Life is strange. Life is strange. Nintendo. It it's something. They still it's haven't made their eShop amazing, by the way. Like I, it's <laughs> they're like four years into this console. And I know. Still, <laughs> your eShop features like it still just pretty much has a running list of like most recently published games. It's essentially what it is. You can do some filtering, but it's pretty bad. Anyway, um, moving on. Guardians of the Galaxy is coming to the Switch, cool. but you have to stream it from the cloud. Yeah. Oh, did, oh did really? They say that? I, I don't remember the nice caveat. Yeah. It did not say that. I looked that up. I was like, uh, how is this going to run on the. Uh, they usually no. have an asterisk or something at the bottom with the. No, they didn't have I the... could be wrong if you guys want to look it up real quick, but that's, I don't I'm know, pretty yeah. sure I saw that when I when I Googled it. I was like, that's how they're doing it. Now, the uh, it's not like that's impossible to make it work. I tried the control thing and the Hitman 3 thing, and it's surprising. It Like, if you've got a good connection and can keep it steady. It is a way to experience that stuff. It is not the optimal way, of course. Of course it's not. Yeah, but sure. it's just cool that they're, I think, I see it as like Square especially, they're experimenting with how can they get their high budget games on lower powered devices. And so I, I think it's an interesting concept. It's just they haven't mastered it yet, in my opinion. So yeah. Um, but it works better for, of course, your turn-based type stuff. Stuff like Guardians of the Galaxy, I wonder, with all the fast-paced stuff running around, moving, and I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to get it on the Switch as well. I mean, Control, there's a lot of fast movement in that, so if that works relatively decent, then... Worked okay. Yeah. I mean, I didn't get really deep into the game. It was like some really simple encounters at the very, very beginning. Yeah, but you're dashing around a lot in Control, so... Yeah, you Correct. are. Correct. 
Um, Worms Rumble, which is already out on a few other platforms, I think, is this arena-based shooter. I, I like the good old-fashioned turn-based Worms games, but uh, if you like the arena-based sort of fast-paced multiplayer, that comes out June 23rd. Uh, Astria Ascending is a Freitas type of a game, I think. It's this... Yeah. I think it's also already out elsewhere. I could be wrong. No, it's not. No, it was announced a few oh, months ago. It's it's a, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's September 30th. It is coming to other platforms, though, I think. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about that. I'm pretty sure, if I recall, it has a, a lot of uh, uh, people from, like, Square and, like, other, you know, JRPG developers. Like, they just created a new team. So I'm excited Visuals about that. are really cool on this one. Yes, yes, yes. Looks really nice. Um, Two Point Campus, of course, we heard that one announced earlier this week. And uh, yeah. super fun and silly simulation game of Two Point Hospital. I'm, I'm all in. I'll, I'll yeah. try this one out. Um, it comes out 2022, also on the Switch. And then we got news about when they were first. Whenever they tease like um, some sort of franchise coming back, and I, I get real excited, like, "Ooh, what is it? What is it?" And then it's <laughs> Super Monkey Ball, and I'm like, uh, "All right." Like again, not mad that people who love Super Monkey Super Monkey Ball are getting it. It's just like right. I'm not the target audience for that. I never really loved those games, but I believe. Is this the first two games remade or first? It looked few, like it said that. Yeah. So it was the first two, yeah. Um, it's called Banana Mania. It's their twentieth anniversary is this year, and that's dropping October fifth. Um, if you look at the old games, I don't think there's been an HD remake of a lot of those. So if you yeah. like those games, this is your chance to jump back in. And by the way, I am noticing Nintendo is filling up their fall schedule. Mm. A pretty good combination of first and third party stuff without really dropping a major Mario or Zelda type of a game. But we'll get to one major franchise they are going to be delivering this fall. Um, Mario Party Superstars. Yeah. It's a, looks like a pretty fun collection of past boards and mini games. Um, this one looks like fun. October 29th. Yeah, it looks like, um, I think one it's Mario like Party. the first five Mario Party games. And it actually looks like it's it's been like redone, like remastered. So. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely new graphics, and I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. From what I understand, it's like a best of collection. So like, yeah, so it's, it's, looks awesome. You know? I'm pretty, ex- I'm pretty excited. If it's got online, it's gonna be. It's gonna be yeah, it, it did, it did say that there is gonna be. Here, so. I'm here for it. Yeah. Yep. So that'll be fun. Uh, if that's your thing, that's October 29th. They did mention Metroid Fi- Prime Four still in development. Sure. Just like Bayonetta. Just sure. like Bayonetta Three. We're coming. Working. I promise. I mean, I don't know what that means. Does that mean you typed one line of code last month and you could technically say it's in development? Yep. I don't know what that means. Yep. Um, did you take all your Metopia people off and put them on Metroid Prime 4? That's what I want to know. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, stop the Metopia DLC. They're right on Metopia 2. <laughs> <laughs> They're on the sequel. Right? They're already, yeah. um, anyway, uh, but they did announce, they did say, I, I started to get real almost worried, like, is this going to be like other M remade, like what are they doing? Like, because they they said here comes another game from this franchise, and then it said Metroid Five, and I was like, what? Yeah. So I got okay. real hyped immediately. Then I saw the 2D stuff. We saw the title Metroid Dread. It Metroid looks Dread. like which has really... been the which has been the working title for like 18 years. Right. That yeah. Was wasn't it like a, a joke? long time ago? That yeah. Like title. everyone's always called it that. Like everyone, that's how they refer to it. That and was like... the that was the follow up to Fusion that never mm-hmm. really. Saw yep. the light. It was always just like the uh, well, leaked name of that's it. That's what I, I thought this was going to be. I thought it was a remake of Fusion because the that's suit in this looks of. very similar to the one in Fusion. Cause Cause it, well, yeah, because you're starting would make from sense the story from there. with the Samus right. Returns remake on the 3DS a couple years back, uh, which is a great game. Um, so I kind of thought this was in that same vein, but no, brand new game in the story. They're kind of continuing the saga. And this is the final like uh, part of the, what do they call it? The Samus. Iran saga or whatever. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So mm. this is like we're finally tying all of it together. Okay. Yeah. Senua's so, sacrifice. The um, um, <laughs> but yeah, this that, this this looks so good. Like I yeah. was thrilled when as soon as I saw this, I was like, it's a good direct. Like I'm pretty sure I said it out loud. I was yeah. just like, yes. And then it, it said it. it's coming October eighth. Yeah, so, yeah, this year, yeah. dude. Before dude, I even 19 saw years. a lot of the gameplay, I yeah. just saw like it's gonna be side scrolling. It looks really dark and foreboding and pretty. Like it, and it's a, and a really it, classic version of this. And it's coming out October eighth. I'm so excited. It looks like it has like gameplay elements that definitely weren't in the past ones too. Um, which apparently 19 years ago was the last like, yeah, was the last one that they they mentioned um, that they had made. But yeah, um, yeah, it just it looks and um, the whole nemesis uh, chasing after you type of enemies. Yeah, just stalking you and you can't yeah, kill them. I mean, I'm sure eventually you can kill them, but you know. 
You yeah, know what's funny is as, me out, but as soon as I saw them, <laughs> as soon as I saw her being hunted, all of a sudden I was running like, "Oh yeah, remember Metroid Prime Hunters? That was actually people bashed that game, but that was pretty yeah. fun. That was yeah. pretty fun on the little DS system. I was I thought that'd be kind of fun because they had all these other bounty hunters that you mm-hmm. were working against. But anyway, um, they brought over some stuff from the 3DS remake, Samus Returns. They brought some of those pieces over, like the melee counter and the, the ability to free aim and stuff. I loved that stuff. I thought that game was a real a real blast to play. So I'm very much looking forward to this one. It's going to be awesome. Um, now, oh, and afterwards, Treehouse Live did a pretty lengthy gameplay segment. Showed yeah, I watched yeah. some of that. Yeah, I watched some of that. Yeah, and I, I turned it off after a bit, not because I wasn't interested, but I was like, all right, I, I'm sold. I don't I just want to play it. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't need to see anything else. Now, it's possible this game is going to be very repetitive in its environments. So that could be a knock against it. Does it, But it's also possible they're showing us just a chunky slice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> chunky slice, so, yeah. Metroid Dread, the chunky episode. slice. That's the name of this episode is Chunky Slice. Chunky Slice. Dan, make sure you chunky work the end of this current gen. Oh, well. Chunky Slice. <laughs> Uh, but listen, I, listen, as hyped as I am now for a Nintendo game for this fall, I'm more hyped for Just Dance 2022. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank God. It's coming. Tell to me about oh, it. Thank yeah. God. Um, <laughs> I'm just He's glad that it was right, that's going to save the industry. I'm glad it was a quick trailer and not the absolutely cringe inducing Ubisoft yeah. trailer where they interviewed the artist and had him talk about it and stuff. And it was like, this isn't even a good song. This is so <laughs> bad. This song is so bad. Are any of the songs good on there, Tim? I'm are sure they? there are good. There's got to be good artists and songs. There's got to be, right? Yeah. There's got to be. I don't know. They put my song on there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> if you can dance to it, it's not a good song. Um, that's all I'm saying. But they did talk okay, about... Okay, that's, Cru- that's... Come on, that's discrimination. <laughs> they did talk about Cruise and Blast. And Cruise and Blast reminded me a lot of my old N64 Cruise yeah, in USA. Dude, and Cruise and World very, yeah, very yeah. delete. I didn't even know about this until you put it in the freaking notes. Very and, dude, delete. I played Cruise in USA all the time yeah. on like yeah. 60 whatever double arcade. tap the pedal right double tap the pedal for the boost right. mm-hmm. i believe if i read this right cruise and blast is actually an arcade game now mm-hmm. maybe has been for a while i'm not sure but it is not on consoles anywhere until it will come to switch this fall oh that's cool um, is it really so. part of the cruising yeah series? USA. Yep. yeah wow that I, I this is news to me that's awesome right I'm, Thank you. i was yes, already in i'm way more yeah. back in now <laughs> like, yeah so this was another one of those just kind of nice oh. icing on the cake announcements that I'm like, yep, I'll probably check that one out. Like I it, love it was arcade racers. It must be one of those arcade games where like you know how some if you go back to an arcade now sometimes there'll be like an updated version of like Hydro Thunder or whatever. You'll be like, Dude, like how do these look? How do these look so good now? Oh, they updated it for just arcade. <laughs> uh, I wonder if it's that for Cruise and Blast. Like it's just call an it updated a... version of Cruise and USA, it... and now we're gonna be spoiled with it on Switch. It's gonna be but cool. This... This next game I got really excited about because I thought it was a new announcement. Apparently, this game came out last year on other platforms, so this isn't all that yeah. exciting. Um, but Dragon Ball Z Kakarot Plus, a new Power Awakens set. Mm-hmm. I don't know if any of that's new content. It seems like maybe not. It is. Uh, it is. All, all the DLC is out now, so this is just the game with all the DLC. Uh, okay, yeah. got it. Um, but this is, as they described it, an open-world action RPG that retells the classic Dragon Ball sagas like Saiyan, Frieza, Cell, Majin Buu. I know I'm re- I'm familiar with some of those. Like I watched the Cell saga back in the day, the original Frieza and Saiyan sagas. I think I saw most of those. Um, but uh, this Good is God. a port of the PS4, Xbox One, and PC game. I've beaten year. this game and all the DLC. It's very good. You ever want to play it on the go? This is how you play it, I guess. Well, Dragon, Dragon Ball Z is the best anime of all time. The yeah. the art style I, seems I, to lend itself to looking and playing pretty well on the Switch. We'll see, but I, I would imagine this is going to be one of those games that's like, hey, this looks pretty good, but I could be wrong. Um, we'll see. We'll see if see it how the frame rate is. Yeah, yeah, I'm realizing that game, how that game, is, that, game that game chugs on PS4 sometimes. It, oh, there's a lot yeah. going on in that game. So. Oh, <laughs> yeah. all right. Yeah. Uh, I, I realized when you read, read all the sagas, I was like, oh, I'm never going to catch up on this series. Cool. No, same. No. Same here. Like, it's like so you've had like 20 plus years to catch up. It's, on Yeah, but I wasn't as old them. as a lot of us are. So. I thought I was too it's cool true. for school or whatever for like, like 89, I think it started. 18 years. So I don't Dude, it, it brings you know. back such fun memories to me of oh, yeah. a few summers after my senior year of high school and then a couple years of college. You know, I was still single for at least two of those years and i remember my cousin was visiting one summer he stayed with us and was working one summer and i remember coming home around 12 30 or 1 a.m from my pizza delivery shift and i would always be bringing home food whether it was my own dinner that i made for myself or just leftovers that people just didn't pick up that night and i just got to bring home with me 
and we would my cousin would get home from his i forget what his second job was but he worked two jobs and we both sit down spread out this huge smorgasbord of pizza stuff that i brought home breadsticks whatever else i brought and just watch dragon ball z till we fell asleep on the couch like Hell and yeah. we did that Something we did that happened. all summer like that's just like yeah, brother. Yeah, such happy awesome. memories yeah um me and my Good me stuff. and my cousin chad jeff please watch dragon ball z just find that's gonna happen please Please yeah. just it's, please. Do it's it. it's the best paced thing ever. It, it <laughs> paced so well. It's so quick. <laughs> just know this. Every time it really no gets staring. to the point. Yeah, it really every gets to the point. Big There's happens, no stairs. Just watch. Just watch. Dra- watch Dragon Ball Z Kai because they actually did cut out a lot of the fluff. They did. The it, that's only 120 episodes long, if I'm not mistaken. Just do, just do it. Jeff. Oh, only. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Just do it. Sneeze it's and you like miss when it. Someone tells you you should watch 24, and it's like this is nine seasons, 24 <laughs> yeah, episodes yeah. each. Like that's that's me currently months. trying to catch up on all the Star Wars animated series. Yeah, uh, like uh, hundred you know, episodes of Clone Wars, Wars Rebels, and now yeah. Bad Batch is doing sixteen episodes a season. Well, of course they they couldn't skip talking about their next their upcoming biggest release, and that's Mario Golf Super Rush. So they did highlight a few game modes. I mean, that game looks like a good time. Does this game looks... look open to you? Like it, it seemed like it was an open world Some type modes. of game. Some modes. Some of the modes. Some there is modes. a mode okay. where you can like I believe you can use your me and and upgrade your skills if I remember it correctly. Like it's got a little bit of that. It does look that part looked cool to me. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, June 25th for that one. Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings cool. of Ruin, of course. They got to keep talking about that. That is going to be exclusive to Switch for a while. It is coming to PC for sure. We don't oh. know about other consoles later. Um, it'll be on PC at some point. I just don't know when. Um, that's July 9th. WarioWare Get It Together was announced. Yeah. Uh, that's coming out September 10th. So this is kind of where I've started to realize, like, hey, they're, they've got something for every month, I think. You know, Seems just like about it. every month. Now, it's not going to be for me every month, but mm-hmm. WarioWare games are just totally insane. But Dude, I have to so admit, fun. they are pretty Yeah, fun. it looked ridiculous. Uh, game of the show, Tim. Game of the show. co op now. And we're going to be able to play them like, with It's going to be co op. Yeah. 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 WarioWare so, games are super fun. They're super so weird. Great. They're yeah. very ADD, weird. They're like the video game. ADD Bad Dream, the video game. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei 5 got a trailer that showed yes, a yeah. whole bunch of stuff. And gameplay, and dude. Gameplay. And a huge gameplay fan. and a release date, because I don't think we had that no, yet. Nope. Did not. No, we did not. But now we know that's November 12th, and I believe that's an exclusive to the Switch as well. Ton- yeah, it is. Yeah, tons of treehouse footage on this game, too. So this is, this is again, I'm starting to piece together, like, oh my word, they've got Mario Party and Metroid Dread for October. They've got the Pokemon remakes, Shin Megami Tensei for November. We'll talk about Advance Wars remakes in a minute. That's December. Oh God, Tim. We had, we had oh. WarioWare in in September, and you've got, I think August might be their only month where there isn't an obvious major game. Like there, I was like, Nintendo, you're yeah. doing it. <laughs> you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> you're doing you're it. doing the thing. Um, and then we, so that game looks awesome, by the way. It looks a bit like a, I have, I, I it looks like Pokemon from see, hell. So. You, can, you can call me racist or whatever, but when I see a Japanese title like that, I'm like, oh, it's not for me. So uh, I it's should probably persona. look at this. You're, you're all it is. So it's racist. just Persona. It's Persona so without racist. all the dating. This show. I mean, yeah. The okay, Shin Megami, I'm at the end of it then, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I like Persona. The Shin Megami <laughs> yeah. series tends to be darker than Persona. I mean, Way this, darker. The, lots of existentialism. Lots of, like, it's the end of the world. What are we going to do? Guys, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. breed your demons is what I'm saying. You can, okay? you can do that in the uh, Persona. Really, yeah. Pretty so, sure. <clears throat> yeah, you can. Uh, then they announced, speaking of... Same mechanic. Crazy Japanese games, Danganronpa Decadence. So all three games from the series, as well as a full version wow, of the board game mini game that's in those games. <laughs> I hear these so games are amazing. They're saying it's four yeah. games if you include the board game as a separate right, game. Right, right, right. And that's coming out sometime this year. Excuse me, to the Switch. Um, so yeah, Danganronpa. There you go. Danganronpa. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Fatal Frame: Maiden of Black Water is coming, yes. thankfully, to all platforms. Because guys, this trailer did not look great on the Switch. If that game I... is a Wii U game, and it's probably gonna look like garbage on the other consoles Fa- too. So. Fatal oh, Frame is pretty God. popular. Yeah. I Fatal thought Frame Maiden of niche, Black but... Water was a new entry. That's a remake. No, no, this is a remake of the Wii U version. Yeah, uh, that makes but it's just gonna be on that everything because that, so that game is entombed on the Wii U. And uh, this is my favorite horror franchise, so it can look like garbage. I'm, but it I'm is coming to, to at least PlayStation platforms. Not sure about Xbox. It's niche, oh, okay. but it's popular. So. It's it's it, they're spooky guys. Yeah. These, these yeah, are spooky yeah. games. It <laughs> does. Look spooky. Yeah. Um, even with all its pixelatedness that I was like, yeah. ah, come on, Switch. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that the makes real more sense spooky now. part. That makes more sense. Uh, the Ancient Gods Part 1 DLC for Doom Eternal is out now on the Switch. I didn't realize they hadn't gotten that yet, but that's that's out now. Uh, and by the way, I think there's a huge sale going on right now, although by the time you listen to it, it might be over. 
I'm not sure. Maybe just go check real quick. They had a ton of stuff on sale, including things like Doom Eternal for 30 bucks on the Switch. Not a bad deal. If you want to give that one a go. I'm going to check that out. Uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 remastered versions. We knew they were coming, but now we know for sure they're coming June 25th, same day as Mario Golf. So they showed another trailer for that. Uh, Strange Brigade. This this one, and it's out now. So this yeah. is one that also I think was maybe in early access other places, but now it's kind of out on everything. I've this definitely heard looks, of this. Yeah, This game yeah. looks kind of weird. It's kind of like I, I saw it and I immediately thought of stuff like Mummy and Indiana Jones and that kind right. of thing. It's this co-op action adventure game. I have no idea if it's any good. But so it's like Left 4 Dead. It's a Mummy, bad name. Like, is that maybe. what it is? Or kind of like a Left 4 Dead co-op? Like I don't know if it's to get from quite about the B. waves of enemies like that, but maybe okay. I, I didn't look into it that All close. Right. Um, but that's out now. They they showed another trailer for Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. Super hyped for that one. Uh, I loved the first one. I know I've talked to a lot of people who liked it but haven't finished that game, and I'm like, well, the game was awesome. The uh, it, it, I kind of had to like think about it again. And in, in the first one, it was like a traditional strategy game, but this one is more like um, uh, Valkyria Chronicles, where it's a bit more free roam. There's the a little com- more the yeah. movement. So and that's pretty cool. I think I think you'll have a movement stat, which that circle can get bigger right. or smaller. I'm guessing, right, right, right. as opposed to yeah. just grid based. Right. So I uh, I like that because Valkyria Chronicles that the the strategy combat of that is I think pretty unique and fun. So it's very good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like that they're kind of borrowing that a bit. I, so. I've only played the fourth one, but I loved the way their strategy combat worked and the way mm-hmm. you moved around. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, that comes out in 2022, as we already had heard. And then we heard about... Yeah. Yeah, the next one, Tim. Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. Yes. Yeah. Tim, you and I have been saying for years now. (laughs) I know. I know, man. (laughs) It's one of those, like, strangely ignored IPs of Nintendos that it's nice to see them showing love to. And I believe... People love Fire Emblem, but for whatever reason, people ignore... They're the same thing, except instead of... They are. And these games are... Fantasy, you know. These games are loved by everyone Everyone who tries them, at least, loves these games. And so it is way forward working on this, which is good news. We, you know, they've got... They know what they're doing. And so uh, it's the remastered version of the two games. But here's the bad news. Well, the good news is it comes out December 3rd. That's awesome. Bad news is it's 60 bucks for these two Eh. games. They look you know great, what? though. They're the Don't, major up, like, up, upgrades. Digitally. I'm part of the problem. I think Derek said that to me last week. He's right. I am part of that because I'm going to buy these for 60 bucks. Tim, so give them the $60 so they mm. make more. They're going to make a new one if we buy it, guys. Yeah. So we need to band give together them the decide now. Just give if them all of the money. If you haven't played these, the second one actually has a relative. I would call it. Now, my memory could be failing me, but I remember liking the story. The first one was like gameplay was a lot of fun and kind of lighthearted. Who cares? And the second one took like a darker turn on some of the story stuff that I was like, ooh, this is fun. There's actually some twists and some surprises in that story. So anyway, I loved both of these games on my Game Boy Advance. Totally loved them. So very excited for these. I still have the uh the Game Boy cartridges for these. There you go. Nice. Nice, nice. But I didn't it's not like I saw the new art style and I thought this is perfect. This is exactly the way I wanted, but I am just glad they're getting an upgrade. I don't know that the style choice is what I would have picked, but I still like that it looks new in, in HD. So whatever. Um, all right. Hyrule Warriors DLC is coming out. Uh, first wave in June, second wave in November. I didn't really dig into all the details here. Okay. It just looked like a lot of new areas, enemies, and stuff seems like just characters and weapons i don't know i don't know if it's story deals i don't know well they're named so i'm assuming there's going to be some story in there I but so, i don't really yeah. know i don't know yeah yeah so the first wave is uh it's out now it came out a couple days ago and then these or it came out yesterday from when we're recording this second wave sometime in november yeah speaking of zelda uh legend of zelda skyward sword hd of course we know is dropping july 16th and uh, they just showed kind of some more visuals of that. I'm still not sold on using two con- uh, analog sticks to swing the sword and stuff. Like, I, And I don't want to unhook the Joy-Cons to do all the motion control. So we'll I pick I'm, one or the I'm, other time. I'm not sold on this game. Like, I'm, just, I'm not sold on, on I really am going to wait for reviews to tell me if like the controls actually feel good with the joystick. Because yeah. I don't want to swing my hands around playing a Zelda game. I'll, I'll, do that wanna... for, I'll do that for ARMS too, but not for this. <laughs> yeah, I just I just want to sit there and play a Zelda game. I don't don't make me. So Arms Zelda. Two, fine, but a Zelda game. You got it, man. Sure, That's yeah. My, Arms Two favorite. embraces the gimmick. Zelda is a real video game. There should be yeah. no gimmicks. Right. <laughs> like... Um, and it it legitimately bums me out that it's it's it just feels gimmicky for one of the my favorite franchises. And this is the one in that franchise that I've never played. 
It's got but such I, a good story. I too. mean, it was on the so Wii, good. so that's why, you know, that's I know. The, for a Zelda game swinging around. Yeah. I know. Mm-hmm. But also, in celebration of this being uh, Legend of Zelda's, this is their 35th anniversary, right? This year is the 35th. Is that what he said? 35, I think. Yeah. I think so. Um, so part of that celebration is a game and watch system coming out this November on November 12th with four of the old school. They call it four Legend of Zelda games. It's not really. It's more like three with a little mini game. Yeah. Um, but you get uh, Legend of Zelda the original. You get two that kind of weird side scrolly one that came out on Nintendo as the follow up that has some fans and some haters and not many in between. And then Link's Awakening was a surprise one to me. The full Link's Awakening Game Boy game. Will be, and it's the Game Boy version, not the Switch yeah. remake, obviously. Uh, and then they'll have the one of the original Game & Watch mini games where you're, I think you're just trying to balance something. I, I, not sure what it is. It's, I mean, he was know, like ba- he was like it was like whack a mole. He was like bashing things. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's it's a classic Game and Watch type of game. Just move move back and forth basically. Um, that comes out November twelfth. I don't know if there's a price out for that one yet, but if you're a collector, there you go. And lastly, with Zelda, we have to talk about this Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild two. I don't know what they're going to call it. Finally, um, we'll see. We'll see what yeah. they call it. Um, I, I did. I did see some news afterwards that Nintendo has said that they're purposefully holding back the right. subtitle because it gives away too spoiler, much of yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what the game's about. I assume at some point when they do a more complete game reveal, then they'll tell us the title because then it's no longer a spoiler. So right. who, who knows? Who knows what that reveal is? There's lots of rumors out there, folks saying, "Hey, it means you can." It's Zelda's also playable. Maybe Ganondorf's even playable, and they don't want to tell you. Right. There's lots of rumors and, and speculation, but we don't know anything for sure. Looks we'll pretty cool, though. It does. It does. I thought it looked really great. Again, it's very small little snippets. It's like, yeah. here's a little cinematic, and then here's some very obvious gameplay. Yeah. One, a couple new features, so, like climbing up through rocks that I was like, whoa! You know. I, I guess, well, because I, I, I never actually got around to finishing it, and I really want to, and I, I know I will eventually, but... It's just such a long game, and I'm like one of those people. I gotta do everything. I gotta check all the boxes, and I'm like, well, that's a bad idea with this game. game. But <laughs> yeah, that game but like, it dense. looks like the the powers from the fir- uh, from Breath of the Wild are like in his arm now or something. Sometimes yeah. though, if you look closely, yeah. there were some shots where the character, whoever it is, didn't have that weird arm. So either it's before and after that event happens that creates the arm. I mean, that's I mean, gotta be. Like, there's, right. saying there's some time traveling elements that you're playing. Or there's time the travel. Yeah, there's, yeah. Or there's multiple protagonists. Maybe you're yeah. Zelda Link. Who well, knows? he's up in the sky, so they said now they're going up into the sky, which is cool. Well, and um, you see, you see like Sky Village up there too, and he's yeah, like, yeah. So, so that's why Skyward Swords being remade, Dude. I guess, because I think that story yeah. is going to have a lot of implication of what's going to happen in this game. That like that ability that he was doing, where he kind of went up through the ground through and then the rock, yeah. up the, the, trip, the, the yeah. rock and out the other end, like that was super cool. Like, yeah, yeah. these listen, the guys yeah. who work, guys and gals who work on this game. They do amazing stuff. Like they come yeah. up with things I never would have thought of. They're like, "Hey, yeah. yeah, sure we can climb, but what about when you get to a ledge you can't climb around? What if we just let you go through it?" It's like, who yeah. would have thought of that? what? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very very cool. cool. And they and it did finally have some sort of idea of when it's going to come out, and it said 2022. Yeah, knock so, on wood. There you go. Probably the fall, but hey, you never. I mean, it, it would be five years to the month if they could release this in March. You know. Sure. Sure. If they somehow could figure out a way to release this game in March, then uh, that'd be Pro- so cool. That'd be probably so not, cool. but <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea what the, yeah. the like how much is this built off of Breath of the Wild, and they have a head start. I, I don't know. Because remember, think back to like Majora's Mask, absolutely massive game with tons to do, and it released I think a year after Ocarina of Time. It, it might have been two years, but it was surprisingly quick. Because it was well, a yeah, reuse quickly, of yeah. that of yeah, that yeah, whole yeah. base game, and they just kind of rebuilt stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Anyway, who knows? I don't. I'm, I don't make video games, so this is all speculation from someone who doesn't know what he's talking about. We do not. Yeah. So anyway, uh, well, that does it for all the E3 stuff. And you know, Derek already had us at the beginning go through what we thought about E3 overall. And uh, overall, I did think it was good. Now going back through these Nintendo things, I do think Nintendo had a good show. It was a good way to cap it off yeah microsoft though i agree with you derek i think they had the best e3 show that i can remember them having i think they've had yeah, other good ones they killed it but and we don't have to recap it we already recapped it last week but i'll tell you like there was so much and there were extended stuff dove into more things with like halo yeah. multiplayer and, and other details and 
I'll second uh, what uh, Kyle was saying, though. Like, overall, just in general, like, just E3 being back is fun. So I'm, yeah. I'm just I'm just glad that, yeah, this year we had something to kind of celebrate. So because like Derek has said, E3 is like the Christmas for gamers. So, you know, it feels and it's just it's, it's just real fun. News. Yeah, yeah, it's just fun. I agree. Yeah. Well, that does it for us this week. Uh, thank you guys, Kyle and Jeff, for joining. Thank you, Derek and Dan, for staying up late. I know for you two, the you guys are getting close to you're after midnight now. So. I, I'm a big boy, Tim. I can stay up late. That's true. Sorry for assuming you needed your binky and bedtime. My I bad. know I'm, a, I'm no, I'm younger than all of you. I think maybe, I maybe know. Kyle's younger. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Derek's the oldest. <laughs> Who <cool>. knows? <laughs> well, he's there's old no in to, some There's ways. no way to find out. So, he's you know. the oldest. There's no way to find out. Yeah. <laughs> he's all the that information is scrubbed from all websites. Yeah. <laughs> That's very true. All right, guys. Well, thank you again. Thank you all for listening. We'll catch you next yep. time. Peace. Thanks.